Hi, my name is Moselle Spiller and I'm the Outreach Coordinator at Green Mountain Conservation Group. This is an in-depth, step-by-step, rain barrel installation tutorial led by GMCG volunteer Tim Otterbach, who designed this two-barrel system for the GMCG office at the Patricia and Charles Watts II Conservation Center in Effingham. Rain barrels capture water from a roof and hold it for later use, such as on lawns, gardens, or indoor plants. Collecting roof runoff in rain barrels reduces the amount of water flow from your property. It's a great way to conserve water and it's free water for use in your landscape. This best management practice is not only collecting water, but preventing runoff from the building's roof from affecting a sensitive vernal pool habitat located directly next to the building. I filmed Tim install this rain barrel system over the course of two afternoons he goes into depth on each step and explains his preferences for materials and parts. If you have any questions about the video, please email me at info at gmcg.org and we can ask Tim your question. And here's Tim. This will be a tutorial that you can use to install your rain barrel at your own house, whether you have an existing downspout and gutter or you have to install them as well. First, what we'll do is we'll look at the existing conditions we have here, and you determine the length of your spatia, which is the vertical part of the roof where the roof overhang is, and that will determine the length of your gutter. Then we make a measurement from the uh, bottom of the, of the fascia down to the ground, and that will give us a, an idea of what our length of downspouts will be which will be the length of the downspout less whatever the rain barrel height and its supports will be. So with that said, initially what I do is I normally put two layers of concrete block on the ground to elevate your rain barrel. That way you'll get a little more pressure delivering to your hose when you tap the water out of your rain barrel. Some people go three or four high. Um, I think two is sufficient for, for just small, you know, watering areas and, you know, plants and gardens and, and watering buckets and things of the like. And I use pairs of three concrete blocks um, so that it kind of is more stable. And some people put a piece of plywood on top of the blocks. If you do choose to do that, I would recommend pressure treated plywood, but you, not necessary. Also, um, the circumstance where your condition we have here, we have good drainage soil, so we don't really have to do anything with a preparation for drainage because your rain barrel, when it's full, will have an overflow which will allow the water to flow coming out of the downspout into the rain barrel and out the overflow and down onto the ground. And uh, we have good drainage here, and our building has a perimeter drain, so we don't have to be too concerned about all of that. With that said, um, as you can see, there's six concrete blocks sitting here in the approximate location of the uh, left rain barrel. And we will take one of our freshly painted rain barrels mm -hmm. and put it in place. This one fortunately already had a faucet at the bottom and it also has a hole at the top, which we will put an overflow on. Unfortunately, it's at the back of the rain barrel, so what I will do is put a fitting in here and then have a little pipe diverting it around to the front just so it doesn't run right down close to the foundation. Usually what I do is I'll put one on the side. In this case, actually, because there's an opening in the top cut for the downspout already, which we'll discuss on the second rain barrel. We're gonna turn this 90 degrees so that it lines up with the downspout as it's coming down from the gutter, mm -hmm. which means that the faucet will be on the left and the overflow will be on the right. And that way we don't have to worry about the water coming out of the overflow and running down against the foundation. Certainly you wanna have uh, a consideration for the location of your overflow because if you have a basement condition in your, in your building, um, and there's a potential water problem in the basement. You want to divert any water coming down away from the building. Um, obviously, if you have a building that does not currently have a gutter and downspout system, it's probably not going to be an issue because the rainwater is already shedding off your roof and landing on the ground. So, 
with that said, um, once you've measured the length of your fascia, which is in this case 32 feet plus or minus, you go and purchase your, your gutters. I have selected aluminum gutters for this project. Uh, you can buy either the aluminum or the plastic. Um, I prefer the aluminum because, uh, well, for environmental reasons, number one. Number two, they are less likely to de uh, decompose in the sun with the UV and they'll last longer. They're easier to handle. Got one section of downspout because my measurement showed that with the rain barrel sitting on the blocks, from the gutter down to the uh, rain barrel, we have about a five foot uh, plus or minus dimension, and this is a 10 foot length. The gutters do come in 16 foot lengths uh, if you can find them. I think Home Depot carries them in 16 foot lengths. Uh, these are 10s, they're easier to transport. In either case, you have to have the components to connect them together. And we'll, we'll next talk about the components. Also, before I get started, uh, safety is a factor. Um, my glasses are actually impact glasses. They don't have the little side curtains on them for eye protection, but they are safety glasses. Um, you may want to wear gloves because you're going to be dealing with sheet metal and you can cut your fingers on the edges of them, when, especially when you cut the downspout and the gutters to the appropriate lengths. Uh, I always bring a first aid kit with me, so if you're at home, you have one already. One would think. These are some of the components that we're going to be using. I'll start with um, this is the little insert for the tail piece on the uh, that goes on the gutter and I'm going to walk over and show basically how this is going to work that we will cut a hole in the in the gutter here and then these will get sealed and riveted in place and this will these will be the the tail pieces that will pick up the downspout so again this will be the tail piece mounted in the in the gutter and up above this will be mounted up here and then in between will be our length of downspout and with that said we also have two clips which get mounted to the building at the top and bottom of the downspout which will hold the the downspout in location with a, with a pair of screws and then the screws will also screw into the sides of the downspout if you can imagine you know something like that and there'll be one at the top and the bottom of the downspout. Additionally, um, you will purchase, if you're buying new gutters, you'll, you'll get the lengths, you have end caps and these get put on with a, a specific adhesive uh, that's made just for gutters and that comes with the, uh, with the kit that you buy. Additionally, we have the, the joints that go between the sections of gutter. Um, and these again will be done with adhesive. And I also pre-drill them or drill them and put either sheet metal, uh, stainless steel sheet metal screws or, or the rivets. Um, in this case, we'll probably use the screws and not the rivets um, just because I like to use the stainless steel screws. Um, I typically get um, three quarter inch number, or half inch number six stainless steel screws. Uh, the reason I use stainless steel is so they don't rust. They're a little more expensive than the than the steel ones, even the CAD plated ones. But these will last forever, and they won't rust, and you won't have staining on your on your uh, installation. Um, I also purchased some additional screws, which are a little longer, to attach the brackets to the side of the building. Um, and these, just just so you know, these are the rivets that come as part of the assembly and uh, can be used for riveting. These will be used to rivet the tailpiece onto the gutter and uh, um, that'll be it for those. Additionally, we have these, these um, screws. I call them the spike kits, but they're screws and ferrules. They're basically a screw with a plastic tube and these uh, are what are used every two feet along the length of the gutter to attach the gutter to the fascia. And these will get screwed in with a, with a driver and uh, I prefer these over the ones that are nailed in only because um, in the event that you have to do any repairs or if you have to remove it for some reason or a tree falls on your house and you have to fix your gutter or the snow and ice comes off and, and takes your gutter down, you can remove and replace and it's a lot easier. Um, also, if you want to take a look at the, the roof again, we have a substantial overhang on the metal roof which is great. Um, 
Uh, so typically what I will do with, with the gutter is I will start at the ends with the gutter at the low point and then very drastic, gradually rise to the middle, but I won't go all the way up to the underside of the, the metal roof. I'll keep the gutter as low as possible because we have a, a two and a half or three inch overhang. And um, so as the water runs off the roof, some of it's going to find its way beyond the gutter uh, just because the overhang is so long. Typically the overhangs are no more than an inch and a half, but this installation was done uh, and they, they extended it a little more than necessary, but uh, that will be beneficial because when we have snow and ice buildup on the metal roof, with the extended overhang, the snow and ice will slide off the roof and pass the gutter instead of taking the gutter down with it, which obviously will be something that you will grumble about when you uh, have to replace your gutter in the spring. While we're talking about uh, components, one thing we didn't talk about is our rain barrel. And uh, typically you see the rain barrels, these have been recently painted just to uh, give us a palette for uh, some uh, local decoration, let's call it. <laughs> uh, they're typically blue in color, sometimes they're green. Uh, they're plastic, uh, they're much preferred over the metal ones just because they won't rust. Um, uh, Usually they come with three different types of tops to them. Some of them have a snap-on top, some of them have a screw-off top, and some of them have a little ring that you, a clamping ring that holds the top on. Okay, so now we're going to discuss the installation of the, the gutters themselves. Some people like to connect all of the sections together and hoist them up at, all at once with an army of people. and. Uh, that can be done. It's, it's, if you only have a couple of people, it's easier probably just doing it um, one section at a time. And that actually makes it easier for you to do the, the splice joints with the, uh, the little splice piece that connects the two and seals the joint between the two sections of gutter. So first thing I will do is measure the, put a tape measure in the, in the gutter and make a mark on the inside of the gutter somewhere where I can see it every two feet because we have fasteners that, ah, here they are, uh, these are the fasteners that we were talking about and there's a ferrule and a, and a threaded bolt screw and it screws through here and then it goes in and it screws into the fascia and those occur every two feet mm. and um, these these have a square driver which is nice you don't have to worry about them getting chewed up and but get the right size driver because they will get chewed up. the nice thing about them again is that if in, in fact you have to remove it or do repairs or something or repaint your fascia you can actually pretty easily take the gutter down and then reinstall it in the same position so what i'm going to do right now is make some marks on here um approximately every two feet. The first one I come in about an inch because there is an end cap that goes on the gutter. And we will have a little uh, a moment here of showing how, to, how the end cap goes on. And it's just, it has a recess to, to match the profile of the gutter. And sometimes they go on easily. But anyway, they, it's just a matter of getting the gutter to match the profile of the end cap. And I always fit them dry first just to make sure that they fit okay. And then when you're ready to install them, you put the adhesive on and that adhesive. And if, if your components don't come with a seam sealer, you can actually buy a, uh, a tube of uh, gutter seal. Or you can use silicone. I kind of like the gutter seal. Um, but like I say, we'll probably end up using the, the product in the, in the small tube just because... It should be sufficient for us to make the joints and put the end caps on. So with that said, we'll go ahead and make our marks. And like I say, the first one I do about an inch in because that way there's a little room at the end for the end cap to go on. Then we attach the, the first screw. And uh, like I said, it will sit inside like this. And then the screw gets screwed through the fascia of the gutter and what I usually do is I'll pre-drill that hole instead of these these can cut their own hole but it's easier than just drilling a hole in the face of the gutter and then when you screw it in it will drive itself through the metal in the back of the gutter and into the fascia and snug them up you don't have to drive them in so hard that the gutter starts deforming and all that because then you just make a mess of things 
So every two feet, again, start with this at, at about an inch or so in. And with the tape measure against the end cap, I just put a mark on the back side at two foot intervals. And those that will be the location of every one of the, the spikes that support the gutter. Um, in certain locations, some places recommend that you do um, 18 inches, but I don't think we're going to need it here. When you get to the splice, and we'll talk about the splice in a minute, but I'm just going to put a splice piece in place temporarily. Um, since we have two, two gutters here, what I typically do is I put two spikes in, one on each side of the, of the joint, just to make sure it's supported. That way the joint, it's the, the splice piece will not rely we're not relying on the splice piece to support the joint the two spikes will do that okay so now we're going to drill the holes for the fasteners that will mount the gutter to the fascia what I normally do is cut a piece of uh, half inch plywood which will fit into the profile of the of the gutter that's five inches wide so when I'm drilling the holes it doesn't you know the, the gutter doesn't bend and deform and some people like to use a little punch to start their holes but if you have a nice sharp bit and you drill your hole um, and we'll do that every two feet and I recommend moving your horse down just so you're drilling almost over the spot where the where the hole is going to be that way you're not going to bend the gutter and they don't have to be a hundred percent exactly at two feet but pretty close but you try to get in the center of this half inch face of the gutter. That way the fastener's centered on the gutter. The gutter face, that is. And we'll proceed on the way down the entire length of the gutter, drilling these holes. So now what we're going to do is just while we're down here on the ground before we install the first piece of gutter I'm going to show what a splice looks like and this is our splice piece which just drops over the top of the two gutter sections and um, when it's in place the back tab is a little bit longer so you just while holding it tight on the bottom you bend the tab over and you can do this by hand. You don't need a pair of pliers or anything. And all that does is it gives you the shape you need for when you make the joint. And one of the reasons I'm doing this now is we've drilled the holes for the fasteners to uh, support the gutter. And I'll see if I can get one in here. And I use a drill bit that's the same size as the shaft. That way it's fairly snug. And this will give you an idea of how these things work. And then when you're screwing them in, you get to a certain point and the screw will hit the back of the gutter and just drive itself through the metal and into the fascia. So that'll be what they end up looking like with the thing all the way in. And that part will be screwed through the metal and into the fascia. When we get to the joint, I opt for putting one on each side of the joint. So what I'm gonna do is pre-drill the holes on both sides of the joint now just so it's easier to do that way each successive piece when the holes are ready to go uh, we don't have to do it while we're up on the ladder or whatever so um, we'll see how successful this is <laughs> it should be pretty easy again I got a piece of wood that just sits in, in the into the little slot in the gutter so that I don't deform the gutter when I'm drilling and I usually put the put the gutter over the the, the place that I'm drilling I put over the horse just so that it's it's stronger and supported better and you want to make sure that your splice is centered on the joint that way you have an equal section on each piece And just to remind you, when you're drilling, don't put your fingers on the bottom side because you will drill through your finger. And that's never a fun thing to do. That's where having your first aid kit comes in handy. 
So now that we've drilled one hole, I put one of the screws in just to align the holes so that it doesn't move while you're drilling the second one. There we go. And then I'll put my block of wood in, which is my drilling support, on the other side of the joint and making sure that the joint is tight together. We will do the same thing. And, and of course, where my, my the tip of my finger is, right here is the center of the joint. So I drill about halfway between the center of the joint and the end of the splice. And drilling the hole at the splice takes a little longer because we're going to through two layers of material. So now I have the holes drilled for the, the screws at the joint. So once this first section is installed on the fascia, the other one we can line right up, slide it into the splice, put the second screw on, and that way the end is already supported, and then we can work our way progressively down through the holes on the second piece, which we will pre-drill before we put it up. Okay, one thing I will recommend if you're doing sections of a gutter is to just label the gutters um, because when you're putting sections together, you want to make sure that once you've drilled them that you're mating the right pieces together. So I always start at the, at, in this case, it'll be the, the west end or the left end and I'll put a one in the bottom of the gutter. And then at the first joint, I just put a two and a two. That way I know that they're going to mate up. And the splice itself, I put a two on, so that that way we know that those components all go together, and then three and four and whatever, onwards. So this will be a three, its mating piece will be a three, and the splice will be a three. And that will successfully go as long as your gutter is. And you don't have to label the end caps, because as you can see, they're made for only one end. Um, they're opposite hands, so that's not a problem. Now we have to install the tailpiece, which which is the receiver for the downspout. And typically I measure it on the inside, but this time I marked it on the outside. And it will go inside and out up underneath and come through the hole. What I normally do is I put the piece on here and draw a line on the inside. Then I turn it over this way and line it up on the line that I put on and draw a line on the outside and I cut between the lines. Mm -hmm. That way you have a nice snug fit because the flange isn't very wide and that's where your sealant goes. And again, this can fasten either with screws or rivets. We're going to use screws on this one um, just because it'll last. Sometimes the aluminum is thin enough so you can actually cut it with a utility knife as opposed to you know trying to use snippers and that's hard to do. So again, you you have to do it carefully. Um, your utility knife has to be very sharp. And um, um, try to support it with the block of wood. And if you imagine yourself opening a can with one of those old manual can openers where you just keep going like this, well, you can do the same thing with the utility knife. Okay, so now we've cut the hole for the... Uh, the tailpiece for the gutter downspout, and we put, we put the piece in, and you want to make sure it sits down snug, and then what I do is take the screws that I'm going to use, and I start from the top, and I screw through the flange on the tailpiece through the gutter, but not tight, just to get a hole marked, and what that will do is, on the bottom you will see that there are eight holes for the screws. And once that's done, now you can see the holes all the way around. And I'll screw the screws from the bottom up inside so they're not sticking down. But before I do that, I will take the tailpiece out and get our sealant. And So this is our sealant. And what I do with the sealant is I just put a bead around the tailpiece. Because you don't want your water dripping out all over your nice new installation and I recommend sealing this up as soon as you can because if you leave them open they dry out and then you get upset because you don't have enough sealant to finish the job we just set the piece in place and this is where I recommend having a rag or paper towels because mm. this stuff does get a little goopy and push it down and the hole that I cut was just slightly larger than the flange so that I know that it'll slide in snugly but not too loose but not too tight. I then take my screws and these are half inch by number six stainless steel self-tapping screws, sheet metal screws. 
and I just screw them in. Before we put this first piece of gutter up, I'm going to put the end cap on because it's easier to do. So I'm just putting a little bead of sealant in the groove of the end cap. So again, we just put the end cap on and push it in with the sealant. And what I like to do is just take, and I usually do this with my finger, unless you've got a tube that has a tip on it. And I just run a, a little bead of sealant right on the inside joint, especially mm -hmm. across the bottom, mm -hmm. just to seal up the joint, again, so your gutter doesn't leak. And after we finish the installation and we get out here and test it with a, a garden hose, which I always do, um, if we do have water dripping, we wait till it dries off, and you just add a little more sealant to the uh, to the joints. And after I'm done with the uh, the installation, before we start raining, I'll probably come up and put a little bead of sealant around the edge of the flange on the tailpiece as well. We already sealed it up on the inside, but I'll put some additional sealant there if we have some left over. take a quick look at that and now you can see up close that we've got the bead of sealant around the joint so that I got to put a little more in there so that no water can leak out at the end of the gutter so now we have our first 10 foot section of gutter ready to install the end cap is in place as is the tailpiece and since I'm doing this myself I'm doing up about halfway up the length of the, the downspout so now the end of the gutter is even with the end of the fascia and the right side is up about a half an inch or a little bit, yeah, about a half an inch higher than the left side. And what I'm going to do is start right in the middle just so it'll hold it in place, putting one screw in. So now we've got the gutter in place. And we will just take the first screw. And screw it in just to hold it in place. And then we'll get the, the low end in first so that it's pitched in the right direction. Okay, so since we met last time, we completed the installation of the gutter, as you can see. And if you walk down to this end, you'll see that we moved the tailpiece in a little bit from the end so that we could accommodate uh, clearing the corner and everything and uh, aligning it with the barrel below. And in this case, because the length of our, our fascia was a little longer than typical sections, I had to add about an 8 or 10 inch piece to it. And that's just another union. So anyway, and, and uh, I think I mentioned before, on the tail pieces, you can either screw them in or use the little white rivets that come with the kit. And while we're talking about the tail pieces up inside the gutter, you want to install a leaf cage. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. Uh, this just keeps any debris from getting stuck in the in the downspouts and ultimately running down into the barrel and clogging your faucet and all of that. All right, so this is the little screen the device that goes in the tailpiece inside the gutter that fits down into the tailpiece of the downspout. And all that does is keep leaves and other debris from going down into the rain barrel ultimately. That's it. So what we're going to do is go through a very quick uh, assembly of the downspout. And I'll start with the components we have. Uh, this initially was a 10 foot piece of downspout, which I've cut for our appropriate length. And um, there are some other components. We have these straps, which hold the downspout on. And what you do is you bend them so that they can be fastened to the downspout and the wall. And they're very easy to bend. These are all aluminum, so, um, Bending them is quite easy. I just usually do, do it on a ladder or something to get the bends correct. Mm -hmm. And I've already measured so I know what, what, what dimension I have to bend it at. So 
that gives you the idea of how the bracket will hold the downspout. And I'll get a little piece here just to do a quick demo that will hold the downspout on the building when, they're, when it's fastened in. And you'll see us assemble this. And these will be screwed into the building and the downspout. Now, if you end up going to a larger downspout and a larger gutter, the, these are two by three downspouts typically, and then there's a three by four. And this would be a bracket that's used for the three by four, and it screws to the wall and then has screws that attach to the two sides. So technically it would kind of look like that from the side, but obviously this is a narrower downspout. But if you had the bigger downspout, that would be the bracket you use. Mm -hmm. um, most applications, you're gonna have a two by three downspout. So with that said, I have gone ahead and, and pre-cut and pre-drilled all of our components so we can just do an assembly here. But as you can see, we have our tailpiece above the, above the rain barrel. And we have two elbows. Get the right pieces here. And um, one thing I will mention when you're working outside on your building, there's often... Uh, wildlife flying around some of it that's uh, a little more unfriendly so just be aware of that and if you need to have yourself some wasp spray if you need it uh, they've been around uh, haven't bothered me too much and I haven't bothered them too much but just giving you a fair warning that it is appropriate to uh, keep your eye out on it so what I've done initially I've also numbered all these which um, that way it helps me assemble them. And you can assemble these on the ground and pre-drill them, or you can do them up in place. It's, it's your choice. Uh, in my case, I, I had the tailpiece up here and I just drilled it. And I'm using half inch by number eight stainless steel screws. And the reason I use stainless steel screws is so they don't rust and just create stains. And when I screw them in, I don't drive them in hard. I just do them softly because the aluminum is is soft and it could strip them out. So what I then did is, is took the um, took the elbow that's going to go uh, down to the downspout, and I measured the distance between the two elbows. In this case, it was three and a half inches. So I cut a piece of downspout six inches long. That way, we have about an inch and a half overlap in each piece. And when you're installing or assembling these, you want to make sure that the piece upstream or, or the highest piece goes into the piece below so that when the water runs down, it doesn't run out through the joint. And sometimes the downspouts come apart. I'm in. Whenever you're ready. Rolling. So I put this one tail piece in, this one elbow in, it's a 45 elbow, and then I put the other one against the wall and measured the distance between them, which is roughly three and a half inches, and I cut a piece of downspout about six inches, so when I install it, there'll be about an inch and a half, or, you know, give or to, I mean, about three quarters of an inch overlap, something like that. Uh, that way, the lower elbow is tight against the building, and, and there's enough room when you're putting these together to, uh, run the fasteners inside. So we're now going to assemble the three pieces of the upper downspout which comes out of the gutter and goes down against the wall and you always want to make sure that the upper piece goes inside the lower piece that way when the water is running down it doesn't dribble out all over the side of the downspout. One thing I will mention when cutting the downspout I used a, uh, a cut off wheel which works well but you still have to uh, with a grinder, uh, it's just a cutoff wheel, and you want to make sure that when you're finished cutting, I use a, a wood brass because the aluminum's soft enough to just file off the burrs so that the pieces slide together nicely, and also so you don't cut your fingers because this stuff is very sharp, and uh, and uh, you also want to have your first aid kit handy just in case. So anyway, we have the the three pieces together and they will sit up on the up on the downspout like this and then I will screw them together and again these are pre-drilled 
and these are a half inch by number yeah half inch by number six stainless steel screws and again I use these so they don't rust and I don't screw them in tight um, just so you don't strip out the screws and I don't use rivets on these because if in fact something happens with the, the gutter or the downspout and you have to disassemble it, it's a lot easier disassembling it with screws than trying to drill out rivets. And I always put them on the side, that way they're not uh, so noticeable. And uh, also um, they're less likely to, if you have uh, debris running down the downspout with which hopefully you won't when you put the little I call them the little uh, squirrel cages in the in the mm. tail pieces to keep debris from running down the downspout it will sit up underneath the gutter like this and it'll come out of the gutter mm -hmm. and go down the wall and what I will do is go ahead and assemble the bottom one and the bottom one since the hole in the top of the barrel is fairly close to the wall, we don't need a short piece of, of downspout to go between the two elbows, so we just connect the two elbows together. There's our bottom piece, and of course it will sit in our rain barrel, and again be tight against the wall, so the upper one will be up above, and this is kind of give you an idea of the alignment, except imagine it up at the downspout, and we'll do that assembly shortly. Okay, so now we're ready to install the elbows. And again, these are all pre-drilled, so they'll go in nicely. And so I will take the, uh, the bottom pair of elbows and put them onto the bottom of the downspout first, just because it'll be easier to, to do the installation. And again, you, you have to finesse the downspout into the, uh, into the elbow because the, the pipes are basically the same size, so you just have to compress it a little bit. And again, these are pre-drilled. And so I will just put some screws in here to hold the elbows onto this lower end of the downspout. And if you pre-assemble them, I highly recommend on the back side of the downspout just putting a pencil mark so you know where your alignment is. Although you can look through the holes and make sure the holes line up when you put the screws in. Okay. So now the bottom elbows are attached to the downspout and I put the downspout into the barrel and I shove it down into the barrel far enough to allow myself to get the top joint together and sometimes you have to kind of work at it a little bit because it's a snug fit. And I usually tend to lean them at a little bit of an angle just so you get one side in first. Mm -hmm. And we fasten it together. And when you're screwing in, you want to make sure that the holes are lined up. Because if they're not, the screw won't go through both pieces. And this is where the pencil marks come in handy slide it together to your actual pencil mark on the piece inside and that way you know the holes will line up. Okay so these are the bent brackets that we we showed you being bent earlier that hold the, uh, the downspout to the wall um, and again I use the number six screw to attach the bracket to the downspout um, just because you don't need a longer screw in there. Um, you could rivet these in, but again, if you want to disassemble, it's a lot easier with screws. And the screws that I use to screw the bracket into the wall are a little longer. They're three-quarter inch screws, and depending on your siding, you may even want to go to one-inch screws. Like if you're going through vinyl siding or, or uh, shingles. And again, these are pre-drilled. And then we'll put the bottom one on, and the same, same thing with the bottom one. And I usually keep them... Uh, uh, you know, a couple inches or three inches away from the uh, joints, but at least uh, that way we know that the whole assembly can't move. Um, although it is all assembled, so it really doesn't want to move. So there's the installation of the downspout.
the last piece of this, this particular barrel came with a faucet already on it. And it is over here. Um, and I think I did mention before with the barrels, if you're getting a barrel, it's a lot easier finding a barrel that has a removable top. So that way when you drill the hole and want to put the backer nut in to hold the faucet in, you can get in. This one I think was drilled in and this threaded in. And then what I did is there was also a hole at the top of the barrel with a rubber grommet in it. So I just bought a couple of PVC fittings that happen to be the same size as this, this um, grommet. And this is our basically our overflow. And these can just be hand tight. And this is for a three quarter inch PVC pipe. That way, if you decide to, once you put this in place, you can run the PVC pipe down close to the ground just so it doesn't dribble all over. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was going to bring some silicone to uh, spray this, but it goes in pretty easily. So with that rubber grommet in place, there is our overflow. The only other thing then that we want to do is get a plug for this this opening um, just to keep the mm -hmm. uh, tree leaves and, and you know, pine mm -hmm. needles and mm -hmm. the wildlife out of the barrel. Mm -hmm. So I, I purchased for the other barrel just a, a bronze or brass outdoor faucet and a little threaded piece which the idea was we were going to put the threaded piece inside the barrel after drilling a three quarter inch hole and that would hold this in place with some caulking around it. But since I can't get inside I will replace this small fitting here with just a piece of threaded pipe which is probably what, what they call a nipple and it just screws into this and then the hole that we drill in the barrel will actually screw the fitting in and seal it up with silicone and that will give us our faucet at the bottom of the other barrel and then similarly we'll drill a hole at the top and use PVC cement to glue the PVC fitting into the barrel. Um, there's there's different ways of putting in again if you have a barrel with a removable top it makes facilitating the installation of the fittings a lot easier well now I'm going to show you a bunch of gutters in place you can take a plumb bob or just a piece of string with a pencil or a pen on the bottom of it and hang it down from the center of the tailpiece and that'll give you an idea where the center of the downspout it should go on the top of the barrel and if you look at the barrel that way you can see that we're at the center of where the downspout wants to be and I've already drawn a little rectangle where we're going to cut a hole in the top of the rain barrel to install the, the elbow at the bottom of the downspout. So again what I've done is just taken the the double elbows put it against the building and I know that the center line was right where my finger is so I just brought it down and I just penciled out a rectangle in the top of the downspout and I made it a little larger than the the, the uh, elbow just so that it'll fit in without being too tight but you don't want it too loose that debris and stuff can get inside the um, barrel so now what I'm going to do is take a drill and just drill a hole inside the rectangle. Okay, and that gives you a place to start with your jigsaw. Now you can use a keyhole saw, which is a manual saw, but I recommend using a jigsaw because it goes a lot quicker. Now we have the hole for our downspout to go in the rain barrel. And again, we'll get some plugs for these holes just to keep other debris from going in there. And the last part of this installation on the second barrel will be to drill the two holes. Actually, I'm gonna put them on the left side of the barrel for the overflow up on the top and the, and the faucet down at the bottom. So what we've done here, this is the installation of the rain barrel itself. And what I've done is put uh, two courses of concrete block, or as some people call them, CMUs, con concrete masonry units. Um, that's an architectural term. Or a mason's term and then I cut a piece of 24 inch square three-quarter inch plywood which I highly recommend painting uh, just so it doesn't eventually rot on you but uh, one of these that we put under the barrel I believe is pressure treated but not necessary um, the reason I put this on is twofold number one it keeps uh, 
uh, the wildlife, like the mice and whatever, from setting up housekeeping inside this, the the uh, chambers of the block, and it also gives us a full uh, a full base for the uh, barrel to sit on. And I usually set it so that the plywood is even with the front of the two blocks, and then I just set the barrel on there, and uh, we'll align the barrel once we get the downspout and and uh, elbows in place. And we're right about there. And one thing I do recommend is once you run the plumb bob down to locate the center of the hole, just take a pencil and put a small mark on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's a little mark right here, which is the center line of the downspout, so that we know where the barrel needs to sit. And if you have any further questions, feel free to contact Green Mountain and they can put you in touch with me and I can give you advice on, on uh, how to install your, your rain barrel or uh, uh, I can come over and give you some uh, supervision. <laughs> anyway, have a good day.